Here we are, Mafre Stadium, Columbus Crew SC's home, a place I've spent a lot of time, but this time it's different. We're here to watch the U.S. take on Mexico, historic site, Dos Acero. This has been a home field advantage for the United States. It's the first soccer-specific stadium in the country, and it means something different now. I, I, I wasn't quite sure how to feel uh, with everything that's happened with the election, what this game was going to be like, what the atmosphere was going to be like, the fans, the pageantry, and the rivalry. Look, this rivalry dates back uh, a long time and isn't going anywhere. And over the last several months, we've decided to dig into a little bit of the Mexican-American soccer culture, how it's changing, and started off where these two cultures meet most literally, Los Angeles. Adrian, nice How to meet you, man. Nice to meet Thanks you. Thanks for taking a second, man. Yeah, no, my pleasure. How you doing? Good, good, good. Yeah? Should test your skills out a little bit. Don't test those skills. Here, let's, 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 see how many, let's see how many headers we can, we, Header? can, we, we can go back and forth. Okay, here we go. Dude, you're good. This is better than most oh. of my teammates, man. <laughs> Those are the little things I can do. <laughs> Seriously, I was, I'm super impressed. Oh, no, like, because I could not play baseball for if my life depended on it. And really? You're like, I grew up in Tijuana, so there was always soccer. Um, but because of my baseball and catching balls and good with my hands, I was, I was always a goalie. Really? <laughs> so I never learned all the foot tricks. I learned yeah. how to block the ball and kick the ball. Okay. And that's all I know. Those are good <laughs> tricks to have. Yeah. If you're a kid in Tijuana in my yeah. age, you play you play soccer. You know, yeah. you play baseball also if you want, but you play soccer. Would you say growing up you were kind of like rooting for the US team, Mexico, or now do you oh, feel I'm like... I'm always rooting for Mexico. Okay. Yeah, always rooted for Mexico. You always try to follow and make sure how they're doing and, and, and just try to, you know, cheer, cheer them on. For the fans here, I'm sure there's probably a lot of cross... You see a lot of crossover mm -hmm. between, like, Mexican fans yeah. who love soccer and baseball. Border towns uh, big into both sports, big into soccer, big into baseball, and uh, so you know you get, you do get a ton of crossover fans. You know when I've gone to the Galaxy fans, I've always wanted those cheer groups to come out and sit in those stands <laughs> out there and just do the cheer. You know yeah. that thought, I think that would be awesome. A lot of, of my teammates of the Mexican Mexican national team ask me about here, about the league, about the the club. I think in in the in in few years more Mexicans will come here. MLS is, is growing as a league, and I want to be an important part of, of that. When you arrived, there was a crazy amount of people at LAX. What was that like? Were you expecting that? No, I didn't expect that, but uh, I know there is a lot of Mexican people here, and I'm really happy because um, I'm very proud of being Mexican. And I feel like I, I am at home. I feel like I, I am in Mexico. This wall tells the story of not just the Mexican American community here in Los Angeles, but uh, African Americans, yes. Native uh, Americans, um, um, immigrant waves. You have the Jewish immigration. These stories aren't always documented in all the textbooks that you'd read in, you know, Los Angeles right. public schools necessarily. Yeah, it's definitely an alternative view of the history, a more accurate one, I would say. Of course, it highlights those points of struggle and conflict and oppression. So it's a very much a movement mural, uh, a social movement mural. It tries to trace the history of the city from from its pre-European days, in arrives the Spanish conquistadores, or the missions, and of course the forced conversion of the native people to Catholicism, to Spanish speaking, a kind of forced assimilation. So um, that's, uh, that, that begins the history of <laughs> LA. <laughs> this used to be a part of Mexico, of course. Yes. <laughs> Is that history really known always by everybody here? Well, uh, sadly Americans don't know history, generally speaking. <laughs> Um, but that's why you get a phrase from a lot of Chicanos saying, we didn't cross the border, the border crossed us. They were here already. You can also tell by all of the place names in California that we are in uh, essentially an, an Anglo-occupied Latin American place. Walls carry an interesting political context, <laughs> specifically right now. Uh, yes, I wonder what you're thinking about. <laughs> This is a different take on uh, a <laughs> use of a wall, right? And to be able to, you know, this was built by the people. There's a perception that, you know, we really need to uh, finally, you know, turn the page on that particular uh, aspect of American culture, this sort of 
seething hatred that it seems a lot of white people have toward non-white people. Now, I hasten to say, LA is not a melting pot. Um, it really is a mosaic of all of these different communities. And um, in some cases, you get really interesting overlaps that are probably something you could only find in LA. We've been looking at how Los Angeles might be changing, but specifically in the Mexican-American community here and in relation to soccer. How have you seen it change in that respect? There's so much cross-fertilization between, um, say, Latino soccer and tracking Latino teams and vis-a-vis -vis the U.S.-based teams, the professional teams, MLS teams. That, that is starting to blur, interestingly, because the younger generation of Latinos are, of course, really interested in their urban soccer teams, their home teams. That changes the story a little bit, but um, I, I think um, you're just going to see more and more, not just acceptance, but interest in soccer as the beautiful game. What's up, man? Well, a lot of great stories about Kaylin. I don't know if these are... I remember one really terrible one where I went back to your guys' place and realized I was breaking out with the chicken pox. Yes. At 26 years old or something. Yeah, like we, we were like, yeah, this guy got the chicken pox. We got, immediately got everything you owned that was with us, and we quarantined it in the corner of the house. I have recovered. I just like to say for the record. Yeah. Um, I grew up in a multicultural home. I'm a proud Chicano, Mexican-American. My dad and my mom were avid El Tree fans, and then I played with the national team. So it brings an extra kind of layer to it. Uh, it means a little bit more to me than I would assume anybody could imagine. I'd wanted to come to this game for a long time, but I feel like the tone or the feel, my enthusiasm was um, tempered a little bit after everything that's happened. I heard all this, and there's a lot of, I guess, uh, tension in the air lately, uh, but you have to remember U.S. men's national team versus L3 is a rivalry of the region's two best teams and nothing more. This is a game. But could People it also not, it. I didn't totally agree with that, but could it also not be, it's hard to not look at it as a way to reflect on like, or an opportunity let's use, possibly let's, to. Let's use it as an opportunity to, to unite, to create hope but let's not use it as something that might divide or, or in a way create more chaos because I think we have enough of that going around any, right now. It is a great opportunity to show who we are as a country, who we are as a fan base in a game where I think a lot of people will be watching because of the political chaos going around. Everybody here loves their country, you know, and, and in many ways they love it in, in a lot of different ways. The hope is, is that we can keep the focus on the soccer. Oh, Basic right. human decency should be the rule. But I think when you think about sports, oftentimes it's, it's it it can be divisive because it's us against them. And, yep. And and then that's the, there's a thin line between being patriotic and and being pushy. There's a thin line between rooting for your team and, and tearing down another one. There's a stereotype, and uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of people want to follow that. And I think. It's very easy to go and find examples of that, which is not great. I wish we could eliminate any example that we had of that, but it only takes one to reinforce a stereotype. And um, I feel like over the last couple of years, you know, some of the stuff that you've read, I feel like we made tremendous strides. You know, we can always do better. You know, it says in the Constitution, the preamble, searching for a more perfect union. And whether as a country or as a sports group, that's what we should be trying to do. We're in America, you know, you're able to voice your opinion, you're able to represent what you want. In many countries, you can't. You're, you, you, have to, you have to hide who you, who you really are. And not here in the United States, I think, regardless of what's happened and what's happening, you're still able to, freedom of speech, be able to represent who you want to represent. We have some uh, U.S. fans over there. <laughs> they're not, they're not, nobody's talking trash to each other. We're, everybody's, everybody's here to watch a game, you know. It's not hate. It's, it's, it's a sport. This is my first time. Me too. Um, and, I, and I was telling uh, some of the members, you know, we need, I need to go. We need to go. I'm, I'm going to make it an effort to go because I feel that there's going to be a, a change in the tide in Columbus. I served yeah. in the Army. In the Army. Um, yeah. I joined back in 2001 before the 9-11 attacks. Um, and then I did a tour in Iraq 2003 to 2004 kind of sir, to, to, to say thanks to the United States. You know, I grew, I grew up here, uh, uh, I migrated, and it's just a thank you for, for letting me be here and succeed in life. If somebody was just kind of walk by and say you're supporting Mexico, but you're 
who has more right to be American than you have served our country? And I know just because I'm wearing a, a El Tri shirt doesn't mean, like, nobody knows my story. They don't know my background. They don't know that I served in the military. I'm not going to advertise it. But, you know, I did. And the few people that know, they say, you know, thank you. And I say, you're welcome. You know? Mexico! 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 The American people are one thing and our leaders are another. I think a lot of nations in this world would say the same thing, that like our people are one and our leaders are another. That they don't always speak for us. And I think that everybody here would say, who cares? This is about USA versus Mexico. This is a rivalry that's gone back to tradition. Like, that's all we need. Did you see any violence happening? Did you see any adversity happening? I didn't see any adversity. This is about unity. This isn't about adversity. It isn't about exclusion. It's about the beautiful game. Leading up to this game, I think a lot of people were worried. I read a lot about not politicizing the game or making it mean more than it is and focusing on the rivalry on the field. And yes, I get that. But I also think soccer can be a mirror to society. And this is an opportunity to reflect, to evaluate how we look at other people or reevaluate how we look at other groups and ourselves. And the last couple of days, I've come away with some pretty incredibly inspiring moments where you see people coming together and standing against something, standing for something bigger than themselves. It's easy to dismiss that Mexican Americans are Americans and like all Americans they have pride in their lineage and history but aren't some monolithic entity we can compartmentalize as other. Like Herc who's son of Mexican immigrants yet played in the World Cup for the US or Alfonso who supports El Tri as much as anybody but served in the US Army. Knowledge and familiarity breeds acceptance and understanding. Soccer can be a way of bringing people together and you find uh, a respect for each other and their cultures um, is really important, I think, to a lot of people on both sides and transcends just what color shirt you're wearing.